and I've come to a hospital to find out what the conditions are like for when women come to deliver their babies. Um, this is the central courtyard. So you can see this is where everyone comes to congregate. You can see some mummers down there. They're uh, feeding their babies. Um, but I've already I've already had a look around, and I'm. Uh, what can you say? I mean, this this is a corridor. Don't let the sunshine fool you. Is all I'm going to say because it, it looks all bright and shiny, and then as you start to make your way in, Namaste. These are the wards. Um, this is, as you can see, the maternity ward. So I'm going to take you down here. So this is where the women who are waiting to give birth, they stay. But actually we found out that uh, yesterday a woman gave birth here and if it's just too, uh, too crowded in the delivery ward, then this is where they give birth. Namaste, namaste. So this, I've had a little peek in here already and oh, this is the delivery ward. So you can see in there, there's the, the two beds, stirrups, there's the, the buckets. I can't even tell you what it smells like in here. Um, it's stale blood. There's there's blood still in that bucket. Um, and there's, there's blood on the walls. That's where the baby gets raised and born. Over here. Over here is where they check vital signs when the baby's just been born. I mean, you can probably see again, there's more blood on the walls. Um, and I just think, when I think back to where I gave birth in, in like a sterile hospital and sometimes you can opt to have a water birth or you can have your baby at home, I mean we have all these options and then you can decide if you can burn your candles, you can choose the music you want, you can have friends, family there or not, it's just unbelievable as I'm standing here and just, just looking around. So here I am, uh, up a mountain in... Um, in Nepal, in the Himalayas, and I think the one thing that just keeps on striking me is just how cut off we are. I mean, this is the view, and it, it is outwardly paradise, but at the same time, there is trouble in paradise. You've got all these these women who are trying to make it to health posts, trying to make it up and down these mountains. I mean, the health post is actually on the other side of that mountain, and either they're just not getting there in time, it takes them up to between two to four hours sometimes, sometimes all day. And the sad thing is when they do actually make it all the way to the health post, then sometimes, well, more often than not, there isn't anybody there to help them because maybe that person, the, the nurse, is is helping somebody else. So there's only one person 24-7 looking after all these people. So that's, I mean, that's so frustrating to hear, but at the same time, as you can see, how do these people get any help? The, the hospital is a whole day away, the post is hours away, and when you hear about the women who are trying to make it to the post, apparently it's a very common occurrence that they see women just giving birth on the road, they just don't make it, and then again these babies don't make it, and when you hear these stories it's just horrific. Babies that are at seven months, at eight months could have made it. My brother was born two and a half months prem and that was 30 years ago and, and he made it because there were incubators and there were nurses and my mum was rushed to hospital and there was that help and here there's nobody to help. You are on your own. I'm going to show you a delivery ward but a delivery ward with a difference. So bearing in mind how horrific the delivery ward in the hospital was. This is the delivery ward that we've got here in the health post as you can see uh, it just looks far more equipped this is the equipment so I'm not gonna walk in here because um, it's been sanitized you can smell the the um, all the chemicals which is brilliant so take my word for it it has been sanitized I'm not allowed to stand on the floor but I can show you down here uh, the equipment that so the children has provided and over there the oxygen uh, machine the oxygen tank for um, the mum and also all around here there's lots of medication and sterilizers and gloves. There's a light. I'm just gonna zoom in. There's a light. Oh, I can't zoom in. There's a light over there as well, just by the bed, which beforehand 
I mean, you, you can believe it. I've been told that the, the midwives were having to hold their phones in their mouths to cast light or torches or anything that they could just get their hands on. But now they've got an official light. So that's pretty brilliant. And then if I go into my pocket, the foot length card, it's tiny, but don't be deceived by its size. It's got a huge, huge impact. So this card, it's got a picture of a foot on it, a baby's foot. And what the mother has to do is put their baby's foot, um, hold their baby's foot up to this card. And if their foot is the same size or bigger, then they're a good healthy size. If it's a little bit smaller, then it shows that they're underweight and they're gonna need help. And as we know, help is not so easy to find up here in the mountains. So what they do is they ring the toll free number that's on here and they'll get some advice about aftercare, how to look after the baby, keep the baby warm. It's freezing up here. Look, I've got one, two, three, you have to take my word, four, four layers and I'm still freezing. So when you've just had a, a newborn baby, pneumonia is um, definitely up there with one of the bigger risks. And also just had to, just to keep everything sanitary and, and just nice for your, for your newborn. But um, it's nice to be in the village. It's wonderful to see the health post, to actually be here and see so much good being done.